In 2015, we left the rat race and went to the farm. We bought a 100-year-old farmhouse and nine acres. After three years of extensive renovations, we can finally call ourselves College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today, we're making indeterminate tomato cages and determinate tomato cages. On the farm, or on the homestead, however you want to say it, we have to make tomato cages. Now, I've got a lot of tomato cages, but I plant an awful lot of tomatoes. Generally more than I have cages. So, what I'm going to show you today is how to make a set of tomato cages using this concrete uh, wire from Lowe's. Now, this is a concrete mesh. It's what they use to put in the concrete. Now, I've got tomato cages that are over 50 years old that my dad and mom had. So, and my grandmother had, mom's mom. So, they are really good options. You'll give them to your grandkids. So, it's a one-time expense. For an example, this roll is just 50 feet. That's all I bought this time. Uh, I'll probably buy 50 feet more next year. And then that will do it. I won't have to buy any more tomato cages as long as I live, hopefully. But now this roll was $49.99. It's 50 feet. So that's a dollar a foot. I could have bought a 150 foot roll for $109. Uh, or $110, well to say. But I didn't, wasn't really that interested in that this year. I'll do make another set next year. Remember, this isn't a sprint. It's a marathon. So you've got years and years and years to get your garden stuff ready. Okay? So don't think for one minute that you have to go out and buy all this stuff today or your first year on the farm. You've got plenty of time. Plant those fruit trees first. That's what takes the most time. All right. So I'm going to take this wire apart and show you how we how we do it, what you're going to have to have. You're going to have to have a good two, have to have a heavy duty set of pliers. And it don't matter which one because you can't cut this wire with a set of pliers. This stuff is just too tough. You can cut it with a grinder, uh, an angle grinder, or you can cut it with a bolt cutter. And a bolt cutter is what I use. I've got one of these small bolt cutters they do a fine job cutting this concrete mesh. So, and they're not that expensive, you know. You can you can use them all the time on the homestead. And then you'll need a tape measure. And you don't need much of a tape measure. Once you figure out how far everything's got to be, then you're good to go. Now, I want to say a word about safety for a minute. The bucket on my tractor is up. Now, I'm a, I'm a pretty much a hydraulic specialist. I taught it in college. I taught servo and non-servo robotics and hydraulics and fluid power. And I use my tractor bucket often for a, with, the, with my pallet forks on for a work surface because it's just handy. But know this, don't get under it. Don't get your feet under it. If you can keep from it, don't do it. Now, one thing I do know is, let's say the hydraulics failed. This, this uh, bucket would, could only go down as fast as the fluid can come out of the forks, out of the, out of the actuators. So it won't just drop like a rock. But you always need to be cognizant of where you're at whenever you're around heavy equipment. So just a safety note, all right, now I'm going to get the, these off. They're just the plastic mesh ties. I can just cut those with a pocket knife. What I'm after, I'm after a circle about 15 to 18 inches in diameter. So I'm going to say 15. If I say 15 and I want to have a circle that big a diameter, remember your high school math. The circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter. Well, pi is 3.14, so I'm just going to say 3. So if I want it to be a 15-inch diameter circle, a little bit bigger than a foot in diameter, 
then I need it to be 45 inches. Three times 15 is 45 inches long. So what I'm gonna shoot for is 48 inches long and it'll give me a little bit extra than 15. So it'll be somewhere between 15 and 18 after I bend the wire. So let's get this laid out. Find the end. Now I'm gonna get this and roll out the feet that I need. So I'm going to start out, pull that up, let it roll back. Come on more, let it roll out. Now, once you've got that kind of out there, one of the easiest things to do is to measure, and you'll notice that the wires are six inches apart. Well, 48 inches, 48 inches is just going to be, 6 goes into 48, how many? Come on, it's not 7, it's 8. So we need 8 lengths out here for this to be what we want. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, come to here. So what I want to do is cut this off close right here so that my next set, and that lets this wire be able to be bent up so that my next set is ready to go and be bent up again. So let's do that. You got to use the heavy duty cutters to cut this stuff. Now how far was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right there. Okay, that's got the first 48 inches cut off. Now we're done with our cutters. Let's take that loose. Come on out of there. You see what we have. What we've got is just a circle. Not completely cut up yet. I'm going to lay this down right here. Now it's time for a pliers. I'm going to try the lineman's pliers first. And I'm just going to go down through here and bend a hook on each one of these. One. Bring you a little closer so you can see. What we've got here, I've got these all bent into hooks, okay? Then all you have to do, once you've done that, is pull the wire together and hook all the hooks. Some hooks will hook easier than others. These old big pliers, I found these in the tractor supply five dollar bin and uh, I always check it out but these are just perfect for this you get a hold of that and then just squeeze that together you can come all the way down through here squeezing them too all of them are done so what we have now is a five foot tomato cage. You can put a piece of rebar in the ground. That'll hold up those great big old indeterminate plants. Now, some people cut these tips off and then make it where the wires just stick in the ground. Well, with those big old indeterminate tomato plants, you have to put in a substantial stake to hold them up. This thing's got to be stout. So, 
just cutting these wires off and pushing them in the ground are not sufficient to hold those big old Cherokee purples like we plant. So that's just not an option. But now what I'm going to do now, I've made, this is one for like a Cherokee purple. I've got enough of these. What I'm doing today is making a set. This 50 foot of wire, I'm going to get four foot pieces. I'm going to get 12 cages out of it. But I'm going to use these for my romas. Romas are a determinant. They only get about four feet tall. Uh, I wanted a more substantial cage for them. I used to use the little three prong push in. You can see that in the video about tomato cages uh, and indeterminate and determinant. But I want to take this cage and make it into a Roma cage. So all I have to do, it's real simple to do, but that's okay. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is pretty much, this wire is in the center. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm just, I think what I'm going to do is just cut this wire off. So I just come up here and start nipping. One. Two. One. Two. what I have now, I have these barbed points on the bottom, a uh, two foot tall cage. If I push these into the dirt, I can push them all the way up to this ring, to this ring. And what that does is it allows me to have all this contact in the soil and the Roma plants will come out the top and I've got six, 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 and six. That's two feet. Remember, Romas are, can get up to four feet tall. So if it goes up two feet and comes out the top, it's only going to hang over by two feet. So the Romas will be totally off the ground. And this cage will last me a lifetime. So that's how you do uh, tomato cages with concrete wire. I've got uh, 24 to do, and that's what I'm going to get at right now. I'd like to thank you for visiting with us at College Hill Farm today. I hope you found our videos entertaining and, and or informative. Uh, if you did, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on both Facebook and YouTube. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.